they can use their higher intelligence and they can um, they can serve the Lord they can pray to Lord because he is a person God is a person we are not on any we are not right now talking about any religion we are just talking about the effect of Hare Krishna Mahamantra because it is a transcendental vibration it has tremendous effect on our brain then when it's like you know when you chant the mantra it's like you're connecting to a radio message so when you're connecting with the radio you know what's happening around you so in this way you can keep the connection with the outside world if you have a radio similarly if you if you uh, are connected with the lord then uh, this is the medium by which you can do that which is chanting what is kirtan now we come to kirtan because today i'm introducing kirtan you know the kirtan has originated long time ago you know in the medieval uh, century or maybe before that so initially in india the kirtan was propagated by saints you know many saints you know mirabai and tukaram and ramdas but in 1486 it was chaitanya mahaprabhu in 1486 to 1533 in his eighth span chaitanya mahaprabhu he he is the one who was the main person who introduced kirtan so he is the one who emerged as a leader of bhakti dharma and the greatest proponent and popularizer of kirtan although lord chaitanya himself never declared that he was lord krishna the vedic literature reveals that he was that he was the lord supreme lord why is mahamantra chanting so powerful and what the effect it has on our brain and our and our full body on our life so um I did a survey. You know, a survey was given to the participants of Kirtan who are participating in a Kirtan because a person who has not got that experience would not understand what is Kirtan. So to understand what is Kirtan, you had to be part of it. So the first question asked to them was, is there any physical pain? Because the Kirtan goes on, you know, many Kirtan festivals go on for 13 hours and the people are playing continuously for 13 hours. Can you imagine any rock band doing that? You know, it's not possible. And you know, in Kirtan also, you know, you have people going crazy, it's high. And remember, they're doing all this and they have not taken any drugs to, to get that high. So the whole point is to do the survey was, wow, there's so much energy in a Kirtan. Why, where does it come from? So now interactions, now I talk about the medical part. So the Hare Krishna Mahamantra can be done in two ways, as I already told you. One is the Japa meditation when you chant on the Tulsi beads and also when you do Kirtan. And now we go to, we use the three things from our brain, which is neuroplasticity, which is aspect of the brain. Then we talk about higher cognitive functions and then we talk about pain and stress reliever. So how are these three things connected to the Mahamantra? So what we do is we'll we talk about neuroplasticity first. What is neuroplasticity? Now I know neuroplasticity looks like a big term, but it is a new term where scientists in you know, Stanford and Oxford and Harvard, these three big universities are trying to find out what is neuroplasticity. This was not there in olden times because people thought that at childhood or at 21 years, your brain development is over. After that, there's nothing. There is no rewiring in the brain. There is no brain growth. And I can say neuroplasticity is a very important aspect of the Mahamantra. You know, it happens unconsciously, but it does happen. What is neuroplasticity? Neuroplasticity refers to the potential that the brain has to reorganize by creating new neuronal pathways to adapt as it needs. So what happens when you do Kirtan? Why are you mentally satisfied? Why do you feel you have personal growth? That's because the brain is rewiring itself. The brain is growing on new neurons.